Hi, Jamie. Thanks so much for joining us yet again on our podcast. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. I wish we could meet in real life oh, soon. I know. <laughs> Do you know what? That was a year ago that we met at the Mindful Drinking Festival. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. When we were studying Amazing. Costa a year ago, yeah. over a year ago now. It's crazy yeah. how the time flies. Yeah, it seems seems such a obvious thing to do back then didn't it just meet up with people now what a thing what a thing I was thinking about you know having a book launch I would have been having a big event and oh never mind just make you sick for like the past doesn't it like yeah I know I could just (laughs) wind back and do that again I I just keep saying it won't be long but I don't know if it will (laughs) yeah so we just got to try and keep our vibes high haven't we yeah and I think we do that really well in the sober community don't we because we all like each other on and yeah 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 very grateful not to have been drinking over lockdown that's for sure that would not have been pretty I can't even imagine how bad that would be and honestly my heart goes I know me too that are in that situation because yeah yeah so it must be so difficult yeah Yeah. and you know our thoughts and feelings on it anyway with the work we do in ACOA yeah just I can't imagine if if it had been my childhood now growing up through a lockdown having yes. both parents at home with alcohol in the house it would have been horrific I know it really I would. know it's very sad anyway that's for another anyway day yeah um you're on our podcast the week after as well weirdly yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that's the amazing work you're doing with that charity it's it's, so, it's fantastic I, I really hope you know that there's there's even you know raises even more awareness for them because it's brilliant yeah, we're really grateful for your contribution on that as well. So oh, thank okay. you for doing that, Jamie. Um, so let's talk about you because you've had a busy year. Um, mm, and you've I have. Got another book out now. Yeah, well, this, I mean, I've written several books in the past on sort of holistic living and, um, you know, natural stuff. Um, but obviously this is the first book that I've done about about being sober and uh, but you know I, I really wanted to link everything together so you know there's lots lots of quit lit books obviously and and it was uh it was reading a quit lit book that changed my life literally so I'm uh, tremendously grateful that they exist um but I didn't want to just do another one that shared my story and said and and doing the thing of here's how you can ditch the booze so I think there's lots of them out there and they do it brilliantly mm-hmm. um I wanted to do something a little bit different which brought in um, all my shtick, if you like, which is the whole holistic picture. Um, so that's why it felt important to, to get the book out. I went through a, a whole phase of thinking, shall I write a book on this topic? I, I, do I need to? I, I don't know. Um, but then, you know, when, you know, I run the Sober Club and there's so many people in that community who are making so many changes in so many different areas of their life that it started to make me think, actually, this really is a thing. It's a real thing that when people ditch the booze, every other area of their life starts to upscale, um, not least their optimum health and well-being. So, so yeah, let's do a, an optimum health and well-being book, but underpinned by that, you know, sobriety piece. I think it's a really valid point because everybody we speak to says getting sober is actually just the beginning. Because yeah. once you start to unpick all the reasons you were drinking, there's exactly. so many areas of development pop up. People realise that their physical health isn't right, their mental health isn't quite right. And that's where it starts, isn't it? That, yeah. That's been the best bit of the journey for me. You want to learn more about yourself, I think, when you get sober. You start to investigate things that you might not have done before. Like what we were talking about earlier with you and your mindfulness. Yeah. You're starting to kind of look into that now, yeah. which is something you would have never done before. Oh, you thought no, I, I would cook thought, I thought you were crazy. Yeah, yeah, I did. I thought you were crazy. Well, yeah, I think you're right. It, it, it's, it's that we start to kind of like ourselves and yeah. get to know ourselves again. You know, um, I mean, let's face it, that that's what underpins most most addiction and, and, and most um, uh, destructive behavior is that we don't feel we're enough and we don't like ourselves mm-hmm. enough. And, and that's usually what underpins everything. So, you know, some people do have to go back to the real root of, of what's gone on. Um, other people just need to ask themselves, you know, um, all these years when I, I, I've not been able to settle to anything, I've not been able to sit in meditation. I've not been, you know, I, I couldn't because I wasn't really authentic. I didn't really kind of know who I was let alone like myself um, and when you stop drinking it kind of you know, takes that haze off and you can start to find the kind of person you really are I think it's really interesting how people sometimes discover 
that when they thought they were super extroverted party people, they discover they're actually quite introverted. Yeah, um, yeah. And, they're, and they're happy with that. They love that, you know. Um, it, I mean, that's that's a fantastic thing. You know, I, I used to think that I couldn't I couldn't I, I was so extroverted that I couldn't even, even have a bath on my own. <laughs> a conversation <laughs> but but now I, I I'm okay with my own company now I mean of course I didn't like it before because I didn't want to face up to what was really going on um yeah. so I think I think there's so there's so much you can you can un, un, unravel um and you know I think it's important to stress as well that that I'm not kind of glibly saying that once you stop drinking you know every aspect of your of your health is immediately sorted and all your anxiety immediately goes away and you no longer need x medication it is not as simple as that of course it's not as simple as that um but one thing's for sure nothing gets worse nothing no, there's one single thing that gets worse it either stays the same or in many cases gets better improves um and 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 that's just the kind of the physical and the mental health but when you then start looking at all the other pieces like you know there's a section in my book on creativity the amount of people who find that they've got time on their hands right mm -hmm. who knew there were two six o'clocks in one day <laughs> and they're like wow well, what, what am I going to do now then now I'm not just drinking um and people discover things that they maybe used to love when they were kids and just mm -hmm. you know because creativity doesn't have to mean art obviously it can mean all kinds of things but but people do find that they love things that they hadn't even thought of and they get a new sense of purpose that's one of the things I, I I just love seeing it in people in the club who are find their they find their voice you know one woman in the in the sober club has just after years and years and years um done a writing course and found that she's she absolutely loves writing um it, it you know it's absolutely it's a, it's a whole new purpose for her um, people have started businesses that they never would have never would have done. I mean, because who's got the time when you're boozing all the while, you know, takes up so much of your life. Um, so, you know, it really the, the book really does kind of um, encourage and inspire people, I hope, to um, to. Uh, yes, absolutely. Look at all the health and well-being stuff, but then recognize that there's all these other pieces, um, which is why I think um it never it never gets tired you know because I, I i think i'm sure we've had this conversation before where people sort of say well if i'm the kind of person that likes a challenge you know and i do my six months or whatever or even if i do a year i used to think when i get to a year um i've done all my first you know i've done my sober holiday and sober birthday and and whatever and i'll have been out with friends you know well not not now clearly <laughs> <laughs> in olden days when we used to get to go out um and I used to think when it gets to a year, uh, it'll all just plateau. There's be nothing to look for. It won't be fresh and new anymore. Um, but the opposite is true. Absolutely the opposite is true. Every single year, every single year it gets better. You know, that naff gift that keeps on giving. I was just going to say, I hate that it's I, I, you, know that I've, I, you know, I've actually pitched out a challenge to anyone who can come. I've got a fabulous prize. I've no idea what it is, but trust me, I'll come up with something. <laughs> For anyone who can give me a phrase that means the same thing, but it isn't naff. Nobody's <laughs> managed it yet. I love it. But it's the only way of describing it, though. It is. Really, it, it is constantly evolving. Like, just yeah. when you think you've hit your peak, yeah. something yeah. else comes up. You know, and, and it's funny you say about creativity, because I, I learned to play the guitar when I was about four years old. My dad taught me. And I'd played till I was probably mid-teens, then kind of done what mid-teens do, drinking in my case, and then kind of gone back to it on and off, but never really done anything with it. I'd never progressed. I'd never got better. In fact, I got yeah. worse because I didn't go back to it often enough. And just this last month, I don't know what's happened. I don't know why. I phoned my mum and said, can I have my dad's old guitar, please? I really wow. want to take it back up. And I've learned three songs and I'm like, Oh my wow. God, that's amazing. Yeah. How fantastic. I love that. I get that. phone calls, Jane, and listen to this one. <laughs> <laughs> Is Shani good? Okay. Is Shani good? <laughs> She's got another watch. <laughs> I am all right, aren't I? Okay. You know you're wonderful. But even the if it's just that you, ever. you know, I mean, I'm always saying we, people should, you know, do the ings, you know, all the ings, apart from drinking, you know, the, the, the knitting and the crocheting and the yeah. painting and the music, you know, guitar playing. And because it, it's all these little activities that's so good for us. Um, whether you end up doing it professionally, who cares? Uh, you know, I'm always saying to people, start start writing, writing, start journaling. No one cares if anyone, in fact, the whole idea is that no one reads it. You're just doing it because it's an amazing brain dump, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I really think, and I, I know that for so many years, 
I I would I would work and I would drink and probably sleep well pass out a bit that's it there there wasn't anything else there wasn't room for anything else in my life because I wasn't interested in anything else because alcohol steals your joy it really takes away your joy and your contentment and your and your sense of sort of expansion it keeps everything small I really believe that I could I could feel my life closing in yeah now I look back you know I I was becoming fearful just of little things not I mean not terrified but just everything felt a bit too big it's like I couldn't be asked to book a dental appointment it's like oh it's just it's another thing and there's that just sense of sort of exhaustion and and that big weight on your shoulders and of course we many of us go through this for years and we put it down to life we say say we're stressed we say you know we've got kids we're busy we're stressed we've got busy jobs we're stressed we're exhausted we're we've got too much going on and I'm not saying that for many people there isn't too much going on there often is particularly at the moment there's a huge amount of stress and fear around but what we're doing is we've you know we've basically got that fire and then we decide to pour petrol on it you know and we think that's what's that's what's serving us and I mean goodness we've had this conversation you know know, non-judgmental doesn't cover it I could never judge anyone else because I did that stuff for years (laughs) I mean years and goddamn years it's you like don't know when you're in it. You, you can't yeah. see the trap you're in. That's right. It's, it's only looking back now. You kind of go, oh, that's why. And that's why it's so hard to articulate to somebody who maybe believes they don't, they're not dependent or they are a normal drinker, this weird term that seems to be floated around. Well, I'm a normal drinker. I don't need to stop. Well, I thought that. I thought I was a normal drinker. Yeah. I didn't need to stop. And it's only now I've stopped that I realised I needed to stop. You know, yeah. like... Yeah, absolutely. It's, I mean, it's this, this thing that, you know, I talk about quite a lot is that I, I I think what kept me stuck was that I th- this perception that there are two types of drinkers there yeah. are those at absolute rock bottom and we can all see that those people need help that's obvious it's actually a relatively small percentage of the population yeah. you know but the perception is you've got those people who clearly need help and rehab and and alcohol services and and, and they're dependent and that so that's where they are I was nowhere near that nowhere near that couldn't identify ever you know with 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 that but then the perception is there's everyone else and everyone else is completely fine, completely fine. They just yeah. every now and then can't hold their beer. So where did that put me? Because I was definitely not at rock bottom, but I wasn't fine. I was waking up at 3 a.m. every day and hating myself. But I didn't dare share that with everyone else because from my perception, they were all good. So it was just me. There was something wrong with me. But then when I tried to kind of moot that idea to health professionals or doctors or therapists, they would say, sounds fine just have an alcohol free day so then it all started all over again yeah all st- you know so that then I oh thank god for that I'm fine I'll carry on and then it would all start all over again and, it, and yeah, so it's, it's not till the light comes on that, that actually it's a spectrum of grey area drinkers but get off the goddamn booze elevator before it hits rock bottom you don't have to wait till it gets worse right no it's so true and I think the the, the professionals element of it is part of the problem and I'm not criticizing what they do I think there is a huge lack of understanding though in the wellness industry in in um, the medical kind of field of what problem drinking and dependency is you know we've got this guideline of drink 14 units a week and you're going to be fine and that's not the case there are people only having and I say only because I'm talking comparatively speaking a glass of wine a night yeah that's taking them down a dark path absolutely using it in the wrong way exactly 100% right it's not about how much you're drinking it's about whether your life would be better without any yeah. um, that's what it comes down to doesn't it so yeah I'm really excited about your book because I think you're right there are a vast array of quick quick lit books and they do a fantastic job the major- I can't think of a bad one that I've read I've enjoyed all the ones I've read but they do very much tell the same story and I can't think of another one that does what yours is doing Mm. well I think I mean there are there are some there's some good books around the nutritional piece that's obviously a big part of what I talk about um but yeah I don't think there's anything that brings in all the all the different holistic things I mean it's it's so interesting because when I look back on my sort of career you know doing the kind of health and wellness stuff it's lots of people would say that's what's held me back because um because I could never focus on the one thing you know you know in fact there's a whole book isn't there called the one thing and if you go to any business training anywhere in the world they will tell you um you can't 
promote and and talk about uh, you know every every aspect of holistic living find your niche the amount of business people have said to me just focus on the skincare thing that I do I do quite a lot around holistic skincare and skincare without chem chemicals so I've been booked for I can't tell you how many seminars and, and and events and I go and I speak on on natural skincare but I can't stop myself because at the end <laughs> of the talk I have to say now having said all of that none of this will make any difference whatsoever if your diet is wrong so then we have to get into the diet and then I say now of course if your diet's really good and you're putting the right stuff on your skin what are you washing your clothes in because if you're washing your clothes in chemicals that's not so then I go off on that tip and then when I've done all of that I say and of course there's something else that's hugely important and that's your attitude and your mindset so then I go to that and then like and then I finish off by going and don't forget you know we've all got electromagnetic frequencies hitting us all. And, I'm, and they're going I only hired you to talk about beauty and um, but I can't stop myself because for me cream? <laughs> it, yeah it for me it is the holistic picture and you can't have one bit without the other um, you can't so that's why you know I'm sure it has been my downfall lots of people have said why don't you do a, a, a your own natural skincare brand you know and just do that just focus on that you'll be really successful how can I do that because as I've just said, there won't be any point because if somebody's not, you know, if somebody's, their water is not dechlorinated, then they're still gonna, and, 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 and on it goes. You so so, so that, yeah. that's why this book, you know, you could, I could be accused of covering too many topics. Well, sorry, but you have to, you have this to. I mean, you can dip into the bits you like, you don't have to read it all. <laughs> no, honestly, this is my ideal book. And especially now, I think I'm just over, oh, Two and a half years sober. Not just over, you nearly Am three I years over? Now. Oh, well, yeah, I'm nearly three. And this is something that I've kind of gone into. And then I start, my, my eating has changed, my skin exactly. has changed, my laundry's just changed. And good, my, good. I'm this time to try and remove all toxic products from perfect from the house. So I, so I can't wait to read this book because Great. I love, I'm, I'm like a magpie. Yeah. For I mean, the publisher did have to hold me back a bit because otherwise it, you know, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't, the spine would have cracked, you know, I did, I did, <laughs> yes. I did write too much. Um, but yeah, but, but yeah, I've I touch on all of these things and obviously there's loads about, um, about mindset and about, uh, I've got a whole section on um, NLP and a whole section on EFT and therapeutic techniques and breathing and stress management. Um, and of course, you know, don't you, that there's, it's, the book's not just me. It's, I've got loads of amazing experts because I figured, well, you know, yes, I do know a fair bit about each thing, but I'm not the, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm an NLP practitioner, but I'm not a master trainer so I thought get let's get a master trainer to write that piece um you know of course I know about anxiety but it's not my main thing so let's get you know pro to write it I've got uh, Dr Gemma Newman doing a lovely piece for us on um uh the power of plants and um you know that sort of aspect of nutrition I've got a menopause expert you know I've got I've, I've got some amazing people who've contributed to the book and I think that that also gives it um you know just a a really different approach because you're reading lots of different I mean interestingly enough there's a section on the menopause and and the editor when the editor looked at the book um I had a real rock rock while of an editor <laughs> so question, questioned everything every single goddamn line and she was great but she questioned every line so like at one point I'd said you know like we were talking about nutrition and how if you get your sugar head on and I was talking about like sugar swaps and saying look you know in those early weeks the most important thing is not drinking don't try losing weight don't you know if you get your sugar head, head on I, to a certain extent accept it that's not licensed to have 50 bags of Haribo's but accept that you might want a little bit of sugar because goodness knows you've dropped a ton with the with the booze right so put a date in the freezer because when you take your date out of the freezer it you know it tastes a bit like a yummy truffle you know and then I'm and then I said something like and, and grapes are great too you know just have them, I, have them in the freezer and they're like nice little snacks and so the editor wrote well, that will be encouraging people to want the taste of alcohol. Oh. <laughs> have you actually gone mad? Have you gone mad? What? So I can't have a grape now. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I had these arguments the whole time. And anyway, obviously there was lots in there about, hold on, I thought the book is called Happy Healthy Sober. Why are you actually including this piece on hypnosis? Uh, well, because it's really relevant. Why are you including this piece on on creativity and scrapbooking well because that's really important you know it went, it went on and on I had to be reined in a bit but maybe that'll be book two 
<laughs> is it available on like audio as well yet Jane? it will be it isn't yet um it, but hopefully Are by march read it, Jane? yeah yeah i'll definitely yes. do it myself <laughs> yeah 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 definitely love your voice yeah. oh okay. thank you no i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't bear it if somebody else read it and it's like no i didn't mean it kind of that way so yeah, yeah, yeah i'll definitely read it yeah i mean my my writing style is very much how i speak so it, it i don't think it would work for someone else to read it, it would just sound weird I think yeah. I could read your book though, read it and hear your voice. I think yeah, I, I think yeah, people that. say that. Yeah. People do so, say that. Because you know, I always when I when I wrote my first book, it was uh, I was um it was 15 years ago. I know that because it's just as my daughter was but never try and have a baby and a book out at the same time. Wow. <laughs> Anyways, um and I was on the radio b before that when my son was born. And I was talking on the radio about all this stuff I talk about, you know, cleaning your laundry with that, doing your laundry without chemicals and, and all that stuff, organic food. And I, I often joke that I was, um, you know, kind of talking about coconut oil and kale before they had their own publicists. You know, <laughs> I was I was ahead of my time. Right. And a publisher came to me and said, I've heard you talking about all this stuff on the air. Why don't you write a book? You know, you must get loads of people ask you questions. And absolutely, I did. I got emails and, and phone calls all the time saying, you know, I know that they, they're taking the mickey out of you talking about natural deodorants, but which one works? And I had those, and I was answering them all personally. But I actually said to the publisher, I can't, well, I, I can't do that. I'm a radio broadcaster. I can't, I'm not a writer. Like, there's no, there's, you know, just no. You know, and then she basically said, well, you know what, you've got a lot of stuff going on in your head, you've got a lot of experience, you obviously know about this stuff and you're passionate about it. So why don't you just have a go and then we'll help you, you know, we'll, we'll help you. Um, you can always get an editor and we'll, we'll help you. And that's how I started writing. I never thought for one second I was a writer, ever. So I've only ever written how I speak, right? Um, which is why I know anyone can do it, because ultimately it's not about, you know, well, certainly in my case, it's not about being able to come up with incredible literature. It's just about sharing your enthusiasm, you know, and your passion. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, You'll be really it. excited when it comes out on Audible then, won't you know? Definitely. You like your audio yeah. Who yeah. else will be is my mum. Because... She loves you. Oh, she loves <laughs> you. I told, I told <laughs> her you on our podcast today and she was like, oh, I'll listen to her in the afternoon. We oh, bless her. Right, yeah. but she will, and my mum's sober as well. She's uh, is she like, when I got to 100 days and she saw all the benefits. Oh, that's you know, amazing! I was it everywhere, she was like, I want a bit of that. Isn't um, it great how that little the, the light you know, everything ripples out? You know, people so many people say to me, um, you know, they come in the sober club and they'll go, I'm, I'm doing this, but don't send me any emails in case someone opens my email account. You know, I need to keep it all completely secret. Well, I did for the first few months. And then they'll say, and the main reason is because, you know, I've got no idea how I'm going to share this with my family or tell anyone else. I'm so worried about what they're going to think, you know, and, and th this is what holds people back. But actually, you don't need to do any preaching. You don't need to be evangelical. Just do what you do. Do it for yourself. And they'll they'll catch sight of it. They'll see it. They'll see the change in you. That's so amazing. You must be really chuffed. Oh, I am. I've got my mum and my best friend. It's like that's and my, my husband. And, yeah, and like, oh, fantastic! Like whole world. So I'm really, really happy with that. And I and you're so right. It's about showing people and just living your best happy life, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Although we have been it's called like, evangelical. Yeah, that was once. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he drank a lot. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we did. We did get a call evangelical for uh, talking about removing the stigma around normal drinking, mm. uh, where we were trying to make the point, just as we've been talking about, that anybody, you don't have to have a special gene to go down this path. Anybody right. can become addicted to alcohol. Absolutely, I, absolutely, and I think this thing of you know um, this the, these questions that people ask themselves: the Am I drinking too much? Uh, can I become? Uh, can I be, you know become a moderate drinker? Can I moderate? Um, you know, I get that question all the time. You know, I'm sure you guys do. Um, and my answer to that will be: well, Why are you asking me? Why are you asking me if you can moderate? Just the question it tells you exactly everything you need to know. You know, I I know that I am a moderate kiwi fruit eater, right? I don't need to ask you about it or join a reader club or I'm a very moderate kiwi eater, fruit eater. I, you know, I like a kiwi fruit. If I've got some, I'll eat one. I might not have one for six months. And then do you know what? If I'm on holiday, I might have six. <laughs> That's a great big fruit salad and have six. Right. But I'm not going to be going, well, Thursdays I don't eat kiwi fruits. And I must make a rule that I won't eat a kiwi fruit if I go, it's, it's nonsense. 
it's, it's not a thing. It's not a thing for me. I do it or I don't do it. It's not a thing. But if you've got to ask, it's a thing, right? Definitely. Lisa's just brought up something on her iPad. It was a post we did the other day and I wrote it, but I couldn't rem remember what it was. And we'd said that people that can control their drinking don't try and control their drinking. Exactly. exactly. And that's all their Kiwis. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, well, I have the conversation when I'm doing the group coaching sometimes in our members group. I have the conversation with, with the members and they're quite open to hearing the truth, actually. So they'll sit there and I'll say, look, if you could moderate, you won't be sat here on a call with me. You'd be off moderating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd be off yeah. moderating. So it, it's so valid. Do you think yeah. your newest book is a stop drinking book or is it a continue to get better in sobriety self-development book or is it a good crossover? No, I think it's a really good mix because the first section is um, based on my online course. So it's called Get the Buzz Without the Booze, effectively. So it, it talks you through um, the first, uh, it's a sort of a mini challenge of uh, seven or 30 days to get you kickstarted. But what I'm really trying to do with that section is give people all the kind of... Um, all the knowledge that I've learned since stopping, you know, I've done a lot of training since I stopped drinking. And I now realize I could have made those early weeks so much easier for myself, so much easier. I didn't need to have the levels of mood swings that, that I had. You know, so much of this is about the brain chemistry being out of whack. Um, and I've done so much training since there that, then that I now know how people can make it easier. And it, and it is the basics. It is self-care and really good nutrition sometimes supplements are needed not always um but you know but there are some things that really are needed and also i think people need to know what to expect because your expectations usually are really high you think you know within i thought within three weeks i'd have dropped two stone be sleeping like a baby look amazing actually the, the opposite was true i think i gained a bit of weight couldn't sleep at all and i was like a bear with a goddamn sore head you know so irritable so irritable and really fed up and exhausted but somehow thank goodness um I'm, i kept on with the quitlet and with the inspirational piece and with the podcast and and that kept that kept me going because i just had this kind of there was a carrot on the end of a stick somewhere that, yeah. that i thought well she's talking about being a year sober and so how i met I, I've, I've got to give it a bit longer just I to see that, you know yeah. I and want that and it is at the beginning for me I know it's not right to say that you're white knuckling it and, and it's willpower there is an element of that but it's all it is that determination over motivation on some days yeah. you know we've got we've got a lady at the moment and she's where's my cloud I haven't found the pink fluffy cloud yeah. like, look just be patient enjoy the now it's gonna come it's gonna come yeah, when you have definitely. to balance when all those things you're talking about in your book come together that's yeah. when your cloud's going to come. Exactly. Stopping drinking is yeah. the very beginning. It is. And I think at, at, at the beginning, it feels as though um, it. a lot of people kind of start off and they and they think they're going to be doing this for a very short amount of time and then they're going to moderate. Lots of people think yeah. that's how it's going to go. And then, and then other people kind of start this journey. And, and as you say, they're waiting for that incredible um, firework explosion of, of something incredible. And, and actually the reality is much more of a slow burn, right? So we talk about words like joy, um, but that's an interesting word. It's not a word I would have ever used before. No. Um, you, you could replace that word for contentment. That's not a word I would have ever used before, right? So I wouldn't say that it's, you know, an explosion of fireworks going off necessarily. But when you wake up day after day after day and you wake up and you realize you're sober and you can remember what you did the night before, man alive, there's a magic in that, right? But it's little, but it's all the little things on top of each other that add up to the, to the contentment. And ultimately that's what we want. Um, so anyways, yeah, the book, the book absolutely has that first section of, of, of how to get the buzz without the booze, how to get over those early weeks, putting in place all the brain chemistry stuff, how to deal with the cravings. Um, William Porter's done a lovely section for me um, on, on that. Yeah, he's fabulous. So he's he's done the real the real logic piece, you know, no emotion. I'm there with all my fluff and, and encouragement, and passion, and enthusiasm and silliness. And he's there. Well, this is exactly how it is. And, and fact, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, so it's great. So I thought I've got to get him in the book because you know people are going to get really sick of me and me fluffing it all, and I, we need some facts, right? So he does the facts. Um, so yeah, we've got that absolute sort of um, 
logic piece in the first section of the book. So if you're sober curious or if you're on day one, it's perfect, absolutely perfect, because you can work your way through that. And if you're already sober, you might still want to look back at some of those pieces in case there's another behavior you want to change. Because, of course, what's so interesting is the elements there work for whatever else you're working on right and I, I love that so that the first section of the book is very much um the kind of okay let's get through this and make it easier on ourselves let's look after our brain chemistry and then the the second part of the book is all of these different amazing um sort of lifestyle uh changes and topics that that support that so no one's going to do everything at once i get that completely you know it's going to be dependable and and maybe you're not ready to read the piece on you know whatever NLP right now or hypnosis or or even stress management maybe you just want to read the piece on yoga or nutrition it's it's fine um but yeah it, it that's that's what I you know I'm I'm proud of that it does span whatever stage people are at which is what I try and do with the sober club you see I've, I've never been very good at only dealing with the first stage because in a sense I don't really care how you come to sobriety I don't care it doesn't matter it, it, for me, it's, you know, make a decision, catch sight of a better life. Right now, let's look what else we're going to unwrap. You know? It's that unwrapping of all these other layers. Sorry, are you still coaching as well alongside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do want to on coaching. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely love it. love it, actually, because it makes, I mean, when I see the difference, you know, the transformation, you, know, you guys must, you know, you know how it feels. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Just It's like I actually said to one woman um, that I was coaching recently, uh, I so wish I had videoed, I'd recorded our yeah. first conversation. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I mean, I, 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 I said, you realize what a different person you are. Like, you're like a completely different person. There's like the, the, the energy, the aura, the everything. It's not just what she's telling me and that she sounds happier. It's literally like a different person. You know, at the beginning, it was this kind of fragile, wobbly, very negative, completely kind of... Um, but broken you know she said she was broken and 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 it's only five weeks on my goodness it's um what changes people can make when they when they focus on what they're gaining not what they're giving up it fascinates me still now we've had some members there's one in particular that i remember really at the beginning oh, just was... how negative mm. she was all of the time and she would comment on our posts and they'd always be and I remember thinking, one though, yeah. yeah, and I remember thinking, oh, she's a tough one to crack. And then before we knew it, oh, what a completely different lady, like running around a country in fancy dress and all sorts. It was yeah, just like full of joy. That is the joy. Yeah. She's it's joyous. She's like, people get yeah. back to who they are, don't they? And you know what? I said this the other day on a, I think I did an Instagram live or something, and I said this: you become more kind. Yeah. Don't you? People become more kind. You know, this thing, this kind of give back piece is, um, I suppose it's just that thing. If you've been there, done it, got the T-shirt, like with you, with the charity thing that you're doing, it's really close to your heart because of your own experience. And I think it there's that, that, that piece about giving back, but it spills out into just a generic compassion um, and just a kindness because uh, it just makes you a nicer person when you haven't got that feel as well you know like if I can feel this good just by cutting this one thing out and learning all these things you can do it too it's just such a simple I know it's not easy but it's such a simple thing to change yeah that brings about such a magnificent I can't even find the words it's just massive isn't it yeah it you really is have a bit <laughs> exactly and you know I mean ultimately that's what we all we all want isn't it to be healthy and happy that's what we all want and and if if ditching the booze is the key like, why would you not? <laughs> <laughs> is that your book in the background there, Jamie? It is, it is, yeah, yeah, this is it, yeah. It's, um, there it is, can you see it? Yeah, it's nice, I'm really proud of it, it's good. Beautiful. Yeah, it's cool. Lovely, and I love it's, um, it's nice holding a physical book, actually, because, um, I know it's been out on, as an e-book for a while, but um, but there's something about a physical book. Yeah, really it's is. A lovely, And I've got some lovely um, quotes, actually. In fact, Claire Pooley, uh, said uh, it's fabulously upbeat, wise and fun. And uh, Annie Grace gave me a quote. She said it's a helpful and knowledgeable book for anyone looking to discover that sobriety truly does rock. Um, yeah, it's really nice. So I've got some nice. Twitter. Did you tweet nice that quote? I think I did. I think yeah. I did. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. 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 So um, 
so yeah i'm really proud of it it's it's as i say there's lots of other contributors not absolutely not just me so um even if you do get sick of my of hearing my voice as you read it <laughs> there's lots of other people what i was going to say was um when i was talking about the different contributors um one of the things that the editor had said to me was in the section on there's a section on the menopause because you know a lot of the women that I deal with are, are, are you know they've got a lot of hormonal changes going on and it's one of the things that frustrates me most is that um, women will will rock up to a GP and they'll say oh I've got, I've got, I'm anxious I've got mood swings maybe hot sweats but you know sometimes it's just the anxiety and they come out seven minutes later with uh, um, antidepressants you know prescriptions for antidepressants which they're on for years yeah and nobody ever asks them what they're drinking um, I'm sure things are changing. It, it has to be. Um, but I, I really wanted to look at this topic in detail. But of course, it's really complex. And the book isn't only about that. So what I did was I, you know, shared a little bit, bit of the experience that I that I know and, and have. But then I got a couple of different as, uh, experts to to write a piece. And the editor said, oh, this is conflicting. This is, you know, this is conflicting. You've got one expert who's talking about whatever it is, and you've got another one who's saying that she doesn't recommend that. And I, she said, so which do you want? I said, both. <laughs> it's really important that people see that even experts and professionals might have a different view. And then yeah. you can read that and digest it and go and do your own research. So absolutely, I, I want my two, the two views, you know. I like that. I like that you've not kind of met, chosen something and gone down one road. It no, because I think a topic like that's so complex. So yeah. complex, isn't it? Who is to say that HRT is wrong or right? Depends on you and the yeah. kind and what else is going on. So, yeah, so there's a, a few things like that in the book where I, you know, I just I present enough information, I hope, for people to go, actually, you know, what? I'm going to really look at that further. I'm going to really think about whether whatever it is, you, you know, might work for me. Um, there's there's lots on sort of breathing techniques and, um, and meditation. And again, that's something that I think a lot of people come to once they've ditched the booze but I couldn't meditate I just used to get shopping lists in my head yeah. you know I couldn't even think about it because I wasn't comfortable with who I was I couldn't sit with my own goddamn feelings um and even now you know I I I, I can't really sit for 20 minutes I find it really difficult unless I'm in a, a setting where it's guided meditation um but I can absolutely show up and do 10 right because that's just a habit I, I can now get into that habit and I can show up for it and it is that the, these new habits, these tiny habits, is that book, isn't there, tiny habits? And, and we stack them one on top of the other and we just get used to doing them. So I've got loads of tips for, for that in the book and, and just simple visualizations that we can, you know, we can do for ourselves. Um, yeah, because I just think that that's, when people ditch the booze, they often recognize that they're not very good at sitting with their feelings. Yeah. None of us are, right? Because we've been numbing them out for years. Yeah. And, and any of the, anything uncomfortable that comes in, we find really difficult to cope with. I did a brilliant, um, uh, I did an interview with the brilliant Carla McLaren, who talks about embracing emotion, all emotions. And it was super useful because, you know, she, she just reminded us that um, she's got a great book called Embracing Anxiety. And she just reminded us that actually all emotions are welcome. They're all important, but yeah. for so many years, we've all been, we're, if we're feeling happy or celebratory, fabulous. But if we're feeling slightly anxious, fearful, you know, jealous, a another negative emotion, oh, I don't like that. Thank you very much. Give me a drink. You know, whereas of course, if we were at school and we were taught at school to acknowledge what the feeling is, you're feeling angry, you're feeling fearful, stressed, jealous. Well, let's have a look at that. What's that, te what's that teaching us? How else can we deal with that, whatever that is teaching us, so rather than true. boozing? So true. I've just had a conversation about my little boy on, an, on the podcast that's going to follow yours the week after yours. And so you'll hear it twice. But um, he, he's four and I've got into the habit and only because I'm sober. Yeah. He has a tantrum now. Let him have the tantrum. Get it out. Leave him to it, and don't stop him. Don't interfere. Don't interrupt. And then, okay, where did that come from? Yeah. What exactly. made you feel like that? What else could we do? It's so. If children were just taught from reception, nursery, exactly. that feeling is just part of being human. Yeah. Exactly. Now, what exactly. Can we do with it? And 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 on the same. So much depression and anxiety. Exactly. And on this on the same, you know, sort of flipping that slightly, you know, when when children are hurt, you know, they hurt their knee, and then we give them a sweet. 
right so what's that what's that teaching us or when we feel hurt and sad you know or injured we we, we consume something yeah you know, did that not that, originally start from going to the doctors as well sugar did lumps, doctors not give you kind of sugar lumps like, and vaccines and all sorts yeah yeah God, yeah yeah. Dentist. I always, I, yeah, every time lolly I was poorly, I used to get a whistle lolly. Every time I was poorly, I had a whistle lolly. Yeah. So those associations with, <laughs> you know, comfort, food and drink. Yeah. Um, rather than just actually being able to just face the feelings. It's, and yeah. of course, it's a bit more sinister now as well. And I don't know if it's deliberately sinister, but it definitely is. My daughter, um, who at the time was 11, was in the Trafford Centre in Manchester shopping. And she went into a stationery shop and like I say, she was 11, which is important. And she bought a journal and some pens and some things and they gave her a free gift. And the free gift was a this size stress ball in the shape and colours of um, Gordon's gin. Oh, my and God. She, she knew what it was because she said, oh, I don't want this, thank you. Can I yeah. it? And the people said, sorry, that's the only free gift we've got. And I actually wrote a letter of complaint and said, what message is that giving my 11-year-old? Yeah. If she's stressed, she yeah. needs to use the metaphorical gin. Yeah, to relieve yeah. Stress. absolutely. I was yeah, absolutely yeah it is it's the messaging is so wrong isn't it i saw something uh, the other day about some um product i think it was for uh aimed at mum's homeschooling and and it was uh you know yeah you know what i'm going to say you know it's a delivery of of, of i don't know uh, something to do with the homeschooling i don't even know what and a, and a, and a bottle of wine you know um uh, it's 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 all that messaging you know but but no judgment here because no I bought, into that, I I bought into that crap for years yeah for years years and years and years I bought into that crap I can't believe it year it's after awesome. year after year and every time there was one of those news stories about how good alcohol is for you oh man I loved those oh, I love about, them that's where I'm imagining my red wine and you were just going to talk exactly about cartons, weren't you? yeah the the homeschooling and the, she's like putting a straw in all the children's cartons and then she sits there and puts a straw in a big box of wine and it's like, no, I'm like, oh my gosh. But at one time. We've been making that video. Oh, I just sent it to you and gone, ha, 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 should we do this on Friday? Like, we just would have done it because we didn't yeah. have the knowledge. We, mm. yeah. Once you know, you know. And I know that's another saying where. You, <laughs> yeah. you, you can't <laughs> it with really one, <laughs> but you don't know what you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> yeah, and you can't ever go back to not knowing it. So it, your eyes are wide open. And that's where, where they say, you know, sober people are just so clear on everything because as soon as you educate yourself with this stuff it's just it's like it comes into your face doesn't it it's yeah. down in your face yeah. a lot a lot of people also say to me but i really like i, I can't give that up this up because i really like it i like the taste yeah. no you don't <laughs> no you don't like the taste you've you've trained yourself to think that you like the taste just like you know when you're a kid and you have your tea with two sugars Right. And then someone, you know, encourages you, wean yourself off that, sweetie. And then you go down to one sugar and then you go down to no sugars. If someone gives you a cup of tea with sugar in, it makes you ill. It's yes. disgusting <laughs> because, because, you know, it's just the associations. You tr we train ourselves to like alcohol. And actually, if you cop a taste accidentally, oh, man, it's vile. Uh, I mean, alcohol would taste like, you know, it would, it would kill you, wouldn't it? It was absolutely neat. Yeah. It's just all the crap we add to it. So it, that that's just not the truth. We don't like the taste. People drink because of the feeling. They think it gives them. Well, yeah. we did you um actually get the guy on Instagram because I know you and you and us were having this big oh uh, with Tim Spector. Yeah, Tim, <laughs> did you get him on your podcast? Uh, well, he hasn't come back to me yet. Here's my challenge, Tim. Oh, come on, Tim. Could you come be on, listening? Tim. Should hey, you be Dave, listening? You yeah. Offer. You see, there's there's a, a guy who's he's so he's so knowledgeable. He's fantastic. I love his work. Absolutely love his work. And people hang on his every word because he's in a really powerful position. Um, and 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 he's a scientist. And he, you know, the stuff he does is great. And much of the stuff that he does around, um, uh, I don't know, just in um, people's. Uh, we well, did the whole thing with the twins, didn't he? The whole psychology piece is is fascinating. Really fascinating. Um, but then he comes out with something like that, you know. <laughs> it was like wine is good for your gut. What? Yeah, and there were loads of us on there, and I know I know William was on there going, "This is utter rubbish." <laughs> utter BS. Use the BS word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's absolutely. Just, like you say, a knowledgeable guy. Yeah. Puts something out that's not, you know, even. I mean, I, I have got, I'm a scientist as well by roots, but even without that, you can see that this is just a test done on wine. Yeah, of course, um, of course.
it's, it's absolutely the reason is because of the fruit and yet yeah. people if people have got you know healthy gut bacteria it'll be despite the fact they're drinking wine not because of it yeah. <laughs> And what was sad about it was the comments where, you know, this fills my heart with joy. This fills me with um, hope for the future. And I thought, oh, this yeah. is why we're stuck where we are in our society. Yeah, get- yeah absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, the good, you know, the good news is um, two and a half years ago, when, uh, three and a half years ago, you know, when I was um, on this journey. And as I say, all I could see was the two types of drinkers. And I, I didn't fit anywhere. I thought there was something wrong with me when you know, if it at that point i didn't know that there was this whole world out there of of people just like me who just didn't have an off switch and and people who had got through it and you know um and were living their best life i didn't know anything about that i had no perception of those people right and so now the more of us that are sharing this stuff, there'll be someone who read those comments that you wrote and I wrote and William yeah, wrote. Yeah. There'll be someone reading that who is back where I was three and a half years ago. And someone will read those comments and a little light will go on and they'll say, oh, wow, that's interesting. So these look like relatively normal, inverted commas, cool people who are not drinking. Yeah. So they've been where I am now. And that's that's the beauty of it, isn't it? The fact that it now is talked about. There are now so many more people who are rocking it. And, you know, I often say to people as well, um, you know, we're the cool ones. And I mean, look at all the celebs that are sober. Do you think that, and the business people who are running these incredibly successful businesses, you can't do that stuff when you're boozing. No. You just end up going downhill, (laughs) you know. Um, And so I just think, you know, the the good news is the tide is turning a bit. I mean, it's an an issue. Loads of people, I think, have... um, uh, gone back to drinking because of lockdown i think yeah, the stress, the stress levels are huge um but i just think the more people that keep shining the light you know the more the more of the light that's out there um people will you know when if it's the right time for you it has to be the right time doesn't it i don't think you can do this for anyone else either you know sometimes sober club members say to me i'm just you know i just i'm so worried about my sister or whatever and um you just have to um share that share how great you feel you can't go preaching at someone else. It's so true. It is. So just talking about the Sober Club and your book, let, let's just tell everybody where they can find you and when. Yeah, they, sure. Okay, the book's out now. Is it it? Out now? Yeah, yeah, book's out now. So the book's everywhere where you'd normally buy it, um, ebook or paperback. And um, so there's a, 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 a website sort of dedicated to the book, which is, which is really just a few freebies. So that's happyhealthysober.com. Um, so if you if you sign up there, there's a few free gifts of meditation and various other bits and bobs. Um, and then my community is the soberclub.com. So there's a bunch of blogs and competitions and we do lots of um, alcohol free drinks to give away and various things like that. Uh, and then obviously I've got my kind of membership part of the Sober Club, which is great for you if you're day one or year six, because it's all the health health stuff. Um, and um, yeah, and I'm on, everywhere on Instagram. Um, uh, social media at just at Jamie Lee Grace. So I'm kind of out there. You can find me. Uh, you're out there. <laughs> well, you know what? Jamie- oh, and the podcast. I must just mention the podcast, of course, which you guys have been on. Um, the podcast is Alcohol Free Life. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I love. I just I love doing my podcast. The podcast. When I was listening to podcasts, that's what kept me going. It really kept me going. So that's why I wanted to do mine. You know. So I love it, and I'm. You know, I'm so lucky to have amazing guests. So thank you for being part of that. Uh, a few months ago. We've changed four times now between us. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> regulars on the panel. The regulars. <laughs> yeah. no, seriously Brilliant. though, Janie, it's been, um, as ever, a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, I, I can't you. wait to read your book. And I haven't yet. I am waiting for the audio book because I never used to do audio books, but I've, I love them because I can walk with them. I yeah. Can exercise yeah. With them. So I'm waiting for the audio book, but I genuinely am very excited. And um, we'll, we'll give it a little bit of a show in our groups as well. Brilliant. We? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And, and as soon as we can get out, let's oh, um, yes, let's please. do something together. Let's just plan an event. Let's do Absolutely. something together. We'd let's do it. Yeah. Be great. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're right. I, I know that we've kind of finished, but honestly, the holistic stuff is right up Lisa Street. So it would be perfect compliment to do a, a, a wellbeing event together. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Cool. Let's do it. Thanks, Brilliant. Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Take care. See you, See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.